Hey, Shazam 15 here. Now for the second of this week's films. Right, I want to watch Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Now, important thing to remember about this film, and it's very obvious when you watch it, it's not a remake of the original, it's only the name of the film and a couple of the characters that are the same from the original film. It effectively suffers from... Well, I say suffers. It effectively has Geno Syndrome. Which is Galactica in name only, essentially. It's got the same sort of basic idea. You've got some of the basic premise. You've got a few of the character names. But apart from that, it's completely different. Not to mention a few sly nods to the original. Now, essentially, I quite like what they're doing with this. Because it got over a tiny problem with the original series of films... Well, terminology, because although most of the films, apart from A Journey to the Center of, were technically sequels, they took place before the events, so they were also prequels. And they managed to get around this by creating a completely different origin of the Planet of the Apes concept, because quite frankly it wasn't compatible with the last reboot, so who knows, maybe two, maybe another sequel or two down the line they will actually do Planet of the Apes for the third time. But who knows. Right, what was bad about this film? Ultimately for me it was the behaviour of the apes. There was only one recognisable non-atypical ape behaviour. Is this because most of the apes in the film are lab apes and circus apes and apes which have generally been abused. I don't know. But out of all of the behaviours, only one of Br only Bright Eye's one bit of behaviour actually makes any sense to me. Having, you know, been able to recognise some ape behaviours. Admittedly, let's be honest, the old... Planet of the Apes films never had ape behaviors down. I mean, that was mostly because we didn't really understand their behavior back then. I mean, gorillas were brutal in the original Planet of the Apes, whereas nowadays they just sit there, they don't do much unless they're threatened, and then they're scary. Which is pretty much how the main gorilla in this works. He doesn't do much until he's threatened. Then again, he always feels threatened, so... It's sort of a weird situation. Right. Essentially, in this film, in the original, the reason why the entire set of events happened was the, multiplic the multiple nature of man. Essentially, we lost all of the companion animals. The end result was we created new companion animals out of apes. Then people got greedy and cruel and decided to enslave, to basically work them into servants instead of companion animals. And then they held a revolution when one of them who was, who before all of this was in fact brought from the future in the womb of his mother, but will not go into that. That's the whole sequel prequel mess. It was Caesar anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, basically, that was the old setup. This time, it is humanity's willingness to heal as well as its greed and its cruelty that leads to mankind's downfall. They also get around a nice little problem with the whole moving it outside of the Americas. That's quite elegant. I like that. Right. Next point. Problems, problems, problems. Uh, one noticeable problem in the plot line, but that's more to do with the fact that maybe there's a deleted scene. I don't understand how the animals from the zoo get infected. Other problems are basically the limitations of the technology. They're computer-generated apes. They are obviously computer-generated apes. Computer generation has not gone to the point where any animal can move and you would actually believe it's an animal. I'm sorry, I know some people like computer generation, but quite frankly, I just see it as fake and it's awful. But, you know, it's something we've got to stick with, otherwise it's never going to be fixed. 
All right. Uh, what other bits and pieces are there to say about this? I like some of the moments. There's a lot of nods to the original, which are quite good. I mean, the fact that they call the ape Caesar, the protagonist ape Caesar, that's awesome. John Lithgow's rep performance. Um, the other great nod to it is the line, keep your hand off me, you damn dirty ape. And the fact that at one point in the film, Caesar does ride a horse like the gorillas used to in the original Planet of the Apes. Speaking of horses, I kind of like the cavalry charge, but that's more because the day before, due to my other hobby, I had actually been chased down by a guy on a horse. So, it was an interesting experience for me, because I could recognize that feeling. That was nice to have a bit of empathy, but it's not the bit of empathy that most people will have. Uh, right, what else is there to say? Plotline, interesting. They actually managed to do it. They managed to execute it into a new story arc. It's a completely new setup. I like that. If there will be sequels, it will be interesting to see how they go. I mean, will they continue along this idea of keeping the old titles but creating new films? I mean, to be fair, there's nothing that really stops the um, old film from working. Oh yeah, other good nod is the fact that Caesar says no. This, if you've watched the original sequel prequels, makes sense to you. If not, you won't get why the significance of Caesar saying no as his first word. Otherwise, he just sounds like a petulant two-year-old. The fact that he's like six or seven, we won't go into. Right, uh, what else is there to say? I don't think apes had that much traction. Uh, the apes spend a lot more time on their feet than they should, but... Uh, um... Also, I'm not sure where they got the rudimentary aspects of strategy from. <coughs> that I don't get. Anyway, uh... Yeah, agreed. Downfall, multiplicity of human nature. Film is entertaining. But, you know, it's not the original, so if you go into the original expecting a remake of the original, don't. It may be a Planet of the Apes film, but it has its Rise of the Planet of the Apes in name only. Apart from that, good enough film. It's entertaining, it's got a decent storyline, ironically very little of it doesn't make sense, apart from the fact that the apes don't behave as apes, but nah. What are you going to do? Most people wouldn't know an ape behavior if it slapped them in the face with feces, so... <laughs> Anyway, I enjoyed it. Whenever I thought there would be a potential plot point, they managed to plug that hole. I do love the way that they actually solve the problem of getting out of the Americas. Because it does involve a virus, so... It's interesting how they spread it outside the Americas. It works quite well, but I'm not sure how well it would actually work in term Because I'm not an epidemiologist. Anyway, uh, it's worth watching... But remember, it's not the original. Or anything like the original. It's a new Planet of the Apes series. It's the first one. So, enjoy, and if you're wondering why it's a new one, remember in the original, remember in the reboot Planet of the Apes, they actually have their own origin story built into that storyline. Okay, anyway, have fun, and enjoy yourself.